into the nice hole of the miniature golf unit. Uh, on the nice hole, we are going to be looking at units, why units are important, which units we use, and when we use them, and then look at some examples of estimating area. The first units we're going to talk about are units of length. And, and it's important to put units on because it gives numbers meaning. When we're measuring length, we're measuring how long something is. We're measuring in one dimension, only one direction. When we're measuring one dimension, we use measurements such as feet, inches, or yards, um, or miles. And then in a metric system, millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers. Uh, a square unit. A square unit is measuring in two dimensions. So it's measuring how large a flat surface is or how much it takes to cover a completely flat surface. So we're measuring this direction and we're measuring this direction and compared to one dimension where we're just measuring one direction. When we are measuring in two directions we use the same units that we used up here, feet, inches, yards, miles, millimeters, centimeters, kilometers, meters, but we're using them squared because when we're measuring both directions we are taking base times height in most cases. So we are taking the units feet times feet which gives us square feet. Anytime I measure multiply something by itself I get that squared. So feet times feet would be feet squared. And it's also the number of little squares that it would take to cover the surface, which is why it's square feet. If I took the time to go ahead and draw this the rest of the way out. So I use <coughs> so square feet um, or, or square units are measurements of how much it takes to cover something in two dimensions, a flat surface, and it's used when I'm measuring area. Cubic units are now building on this idea we went from one dimension to two dimensions and now we are measuring three dimensions. So I'm taking that same flat surface I had in the last example where I measured in two dimensions, but I'm giving it a third dimension, giving it depth. So now when I measure this in three dimensions, my units will actually be cubed. And what this is asking is how many of these tiny little cubes will it take to fill this space? So cubic units are used when we're measuring volume or capacity. Whereas square units where we're measuring area and just regular units where we're measuring length. One important thing to note, when I have square units, that does not mean that I square the number. That's a common misconception. People think that 7 inches squared is actually 49 inches. And that is not true. What the square is only working on the units, and it's talking about this flat unit that's covering something. It's not working on the number. Looking at these units, um, having an understanding, a basic understanding of general length, some of these make sense, some do not. The length of a new pencil. Would a pencil be 7 inches, which would be um, roughly the size of your hand, maybe a little bit longer than that, or 7 feet, which is the height of a typical doorway, a little bit uh, or close to the height of a typical doorway. Makes sense, it would be 7 inches. The height of a flagpole, 30 inches or 30 feet. 30 inches, if we do a quick conversion, would be 2.5 feet, uh, which would be a very short flagpole. So three, 30 feet. In the length of a short sleeve shirt, um, or a shirt sleeve, sorry, 18 inches or 18 feet, definitely would be 18 inches. <clears throat> Why is it important to be able to estimate area of shapes? Not all shapes are easy to calculate. So when you have a circle, a perfect circle, there is actually a formula that we'll get to that we could use. Um, but I'm going to use this example to show you how you could do other shapes or estimate other shapes. If I put them on a grid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and count out the number of full squares that I see. And I'm just going to label them as I go. And I'm only labeling the full squares because I'm eventually going to come back 
and all of the partial squares I will fill in. I'll take pieces and I will estimate which pieces make up a full square. Now I can look at this and I can see that this entire circle fits inside of um, a 10 by 10 grid which means it's less than 100. And this does take some time. And there will be a level of human error in this uh, to an extent. And there are other strategies that we can do that would actually go quicker, but I think that this will help you get the highest level of accuracy. So I'm almost done labeling my whole squares. Once I get done with this, I'm going to go back and I'm going to start taking partial squares that fit together to approximately make a whole. So I've got about 60 whole squares. If I take this and that and put them together, it gives me 61. That's almost another 62. Almost another 63. These two together would give me 64. That and that almost make up a whole, which would be 65. That and that would be 66. Uh, this is just short of a whole, 67. Just short of a whole, 68. If I take, uh, we'll say this partial, I can put it with those two that I just filled in and leave it at 68. Those two together would give me 69 that and that would be approximately 70. This would be about 71, 72, 73, 74. This is almost a whole, almost a whole, And if I take this one, 77, and this one, those are all just short of a whole. So I'm going to take this one and just scrap it and call it the, the final piece to the rest of those I just filled in. So our area here, uh, by, by doing this estimation strategy, is about 78. And you can see the radius is 5 square inches, or 5 inches, which means that this would be, because we're talking about area, it would be 78 square inches. Now knowing the actual formula, when I do the calculation, the area in this shape would be 78.54. So our estimation of 78 is pretty close. We're going to do one more example uh, using this trapezoid. And actually I'm going to skip the trapezoid for time's sake. I'm going to go on to a star, which is a little more complex shape. And we're going to do the same thing. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the full squares. It looks like this is going to go a little quicker than the circle. It's a little smaller. That 16th one was just a little bit short of a full square, but that's okay. It's an estimation. 24 and those are all of the full squares. So now I'm going to start taking and piecing together. Put that with that and call that 25. Put this with this and call it 26. Put that with that and call it 27. That and that we'll call 28. We'll put this with this and call it 29. We'll use this little piece to fill in right here, which I had already marked, so I'm not going to change the number there. Uh, so we're at 29. I'm going to take this and this and put it with that and call it 30. We'll take this with this and call it 31. 
This is almost full. I'm going to take that and put it with it. We'll call that 32. 33. Take that and that. Call it 34. And take this with that. Call it 35. And now you can see I'm winding down um, that. With that, we'll call 36. There and that. Make 37. Call that 38. Take these two pieces and put them together and make 39. Now, I would estimate that this covers 39 squares. But you can see here that each square actually represents 40 square miles. So this is a scale drawing. If I have 39 squares and each square is 40 square miles, I'm going to take 39 times 40 square miles and 39 times 40. I know that 40 times 40 is 1600. So I've got one less 40 than that. So I'd be at 1560 square miles. And I wrote cubic here for some reason square miles. So again, when you are given a different scale as we were here, you still count the squares, but then you have to multiply it by what each square represents to get your actual area. You are now ready to get online and print out the ninth whole scorecard.